One you see in every every garden center, there'll be agricultural lime, either calcitic lime or dolomitic lime or both. And it will say, oh, you need this to sweeten your soil. And, and uh, it's true enough that if you've got a low pH soil and acidic soil, adding lime can temporarily raise the pH, uh, if you like, sweeten the soil, uh, make it less sour. Uh, the the marketing folks don't don't bother to tell you you should check first and see whether you've actually got an acidic soil before you use the lime. <laughs> yes. Well, if what you... like what would acidic, what like is so, so like I know neutral is seven. New, if neutral your soil's is seven. Like uh, six point nine. Do you need lime? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> most plants are quite happy. Uh, anything above six. Right. Yeah. You know, so slightly acidic. Yeah, is fine. Uh, Six and a half is supposed to be an ideal, certainly for, for phosphorus availability. Uh, that's the sweet spot as, as far as the phosphorus being most most available. Um, some plants are quite happy down at five and a half. Potatoes, actually, in slightly acidic soils, will tend to have less of the uh, the rhizoctonia, the black specks on it. Uh, blueberries are, are the one plant that really need acidic soils. You know, uh, they'll be happy down around, uh, you know, four and a half or five. But if you get, actually five is better. If you get below five for any plant, you're going to say, no, it's not going to do as well. It's going to start to uh, be short of some of the nutrients. So that's that's in the acidic side. And a lot of the maritimes, you will be dealing with soils that are acidic. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's the parent material. You know, it's, it's granite. Uh, as a parent material, when it breaks down, it's, it leaves behind uh, acidic sands and then uh, transformations that happen in the soil tend to make it more acidic. So in those, those cases, yes, limestone would be justified. I'm sitting here in, you know, southern Ontario. We've got the Niagara Escarpment that was ground up and left behind by the glaciers. And our soil pHs are sitting at 7.5 to, to 7.8. Hmm. We don't need lime, All right? Yeah. On these really alkaline soils, you're not you're not doing anything more than wasting money because the uh, the lime doesn't dissolve anyway. Yeah, it's it's when you're in that barely acidic zone, you you add a bunch of lime, thinking you're going to do good things for the plants, and you actually push the pH you know up above neutral, and if it's a soil that was low in some of the micronutrients to start with, or low in phosphorus to start with those tend to get bound up. So you can actually create problems by, by putting too much lime in. Right. Okay. If you do need lime, and uh, and there are some some gardens, and a lot in the Maritimes uh, will benefit from, from lime for annual, crop, uh, annual plants. Um, calcitic lime, it's straight calcium carbonate. Uh, dolomitic lime is half calcium, half magnesium. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very so. If if a soil is low in magnesium, you want to use dolomitic lime. If it's high in magnesium, you can use either. Okay. Uh, it's it's nothing magical, and uh, there's certainly nothing magical about calcitic lime in in high magnesium soils. It's uh, it's just what's on the shelf. Um, Does a standard soil test because uh, they don't they don't check for like a soil test doesn't check for nitrogen. Um, so, uh, soil test that you send into the, you know, I guess it'd be the agricultural college here. Does it test for acidity? The first thing they'll test for is acidity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Every soil test you get will, will tell you what's the pH. All right. Um, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Hey folks, the video you just watched is an excerpt from my conversation with Keith Reed, a recent podcast I did. You can find that entire conversation on my new YouTube channel called Maritime Gardening Podcast. I've broken my YouTube content up into two channels now. The one you've been watching and are subscribed to uh, for all along is called Maritime Gardening. You can see that it's got 55,000 subscribers. The new channel is called Maritime Gardening Podcast. That's going to have all the podcast stuff. Okay, and you can see that only has 152 subscribers. So if you have not subscribed to that, please subscribe to that so you'll be notified 
when I have a new podcast or any sort of podcast uh, related material released. I'm gradually migrating all of my podcast material over to that channel. You can see I've so far brought over 30 videos or 30 podcasts uh, from way back in the early days, going back to my very first podcast, Let's Get Back to Gardening. Um, so I'm trying to bring them all over, give them a, a fresh new look with uh, new uh, thumbnails and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's a lot of work, that sort of thing. Uh, I do think this is going to be better for the channel in the long run, but I need you to subscribe to this new YouTube channel, Maritime Gardening Podcast. Okay, so if you're already subscribed to the old one, great. If you haven't, please subscribe. Uh, I'd love to have more than 55,000 subscribers to this. Um, but if I'm going to get this new one off the ground, it's going to have more than 152 subscribers. And if anyone's going <laughs> to see or hear the podcast I do, uh, that's definitely going to need that to, uh, to survive. So uh, please, uh, please help out with that by just subscribing to this new channel, Maritime Gardening Podcast. I'll have links to all of this in the description box of this video. I'll also put a link that you can click uh, at the end of this video. Uh, as always, uh, thanks for everything. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a viewer all these years. And uh, we'll catch you in the next video or podcast. Thanks.